guys, so today I'm gonna be doing makeup for soft gamine type women. If you're new, I'm gonna link my body type series down below. Before I start doing my makeup, let's remember how soft gamines normally look. Okay, reading that from the book. So what is their yin and yang balance? It is the overall balance of a combination of opposites, plus some extra yin on the yin and yang scale. Very rounded body type and features on a delicately angular frame, along with a playful and spirited essence. Normally they are petite, their bone structure is delicate and small, yet slightly broad and angular. Angular edges, particularly through the shoulders, square or tapered. Arms and legs tend to be shortish in proportion to height. Soft, curvy body tends towards flashiness. Curved bust line and hips with some natural waist definition. Arms and legs tend to be soft and fleshy, particularly through the hip and thighs areas. Delicately broad facial contours, nose, cheekbones, and jawline, which may have extra bits of angularity. Doll-like facial features, big eyes, round and fleshy cheeks, full lips. Facial shape may be very rounded and it can have a slightly sharp or slightly strong jawline. Alright, now I'm ready to start my makeup. I've applied my foundation and powder. So in terms of contouring, bright colors should be applied cleanly and crisply without overblending in rounded shapes. That's what I'm gonna do for my cheek contouring. It should not be sharp or angular because as far as their cheeks are rounded, it reflects light from all around, especially in the daylight. So that crisp contouring can look like a dirty line on the cheek, especially during the daytime. But if you apply it in a rounded motion, you will see the huge difference. That's when you're creating that real shadow effect and you can see how I'm blending that also upwards on that space where people usually apply their blush so I'm also blending it to that space that's given me that very natural contouring effect of course as usual I apply it on the sides of my forehead just to create more uniform look then for contouring my nose I just basically making it slightly smaller soft gamines have different noses most of them have maybe slightly sharp or button-up nose and I also apply my contouring powder on my neck, again, for that uniform look. Now I'm gonna make my brows. They look great with crisp brows, with rounded or slightly angular, slightly triangular shape. Just follow your natural shape. They don't look as good with super thin brows, but they just should look tidy and frame the face. Don't make them too dark and angular and aggressive. It's gonna look very separate from your soft face. So for my daytime look, I'm gonna use that dusty pink pencil for my lips. I'm gonna make very clumpy lashes, so I'm using that eyelash primer and I'm applying several coats of it. While it's drying, I decided to add some blush. You can do it or not do it, it's up to you. They look great with matte colors, however you can use shimmer on the cheeks, on the chin to make it more doll-like look. Now I'm applying black mascara, many coats of it, these ladies look amazing with clumpy lashes and soon we will see some famous examples of it. So don't be scared for that, at least try that at home. It can make a huge difference for you because you still have some angularity on your face that can pull that off. So this is that version of very nude makeup. I also can apply some rosiness to my lips. Now to lift my eyes up a little bit, I've chosen that matte brown color. It doesn't have to be super dark necessarily. Of course it depends on your skin color. Make the flick just on the outer corners but make it very chunky. It will really lift your eyes up. Now I'm gonna add some of that gentle crease color. So I'm making my makeup heavier and heavier. I'm also adding that color under my lower lashes and I'm blending it slightly more. I even don't have to be exactly on my lash line. That will create that very bushy lashes effect and also very doll-like effect. So my eyes look a little bit more defined, they look bigger, but it's still very daytime makeup. Now we are going closer to old Hollywood makeup. So I'm applying that black chunky and very crisp line on my eyes. These ladies look amazing with very heavy eyeliner for an extremely defined shape. They look gorgeous with it. You don't need to blend it. Sometimes you can. It can create some softness for you, but you are the one who doesn't need to soften it. As far as I don't have liquid eyeliner, I'm using thin brush and black eyeshadow, but if I had one, I would definitely use one. And I'm making this line actually a little bit artificial. I'm elongating it to my nose slightly, and I'm elongating it on the outer corners slightly again, but more to the top and make it very thick and very chunky and that creates that slightly unreal doll effect now i'm adding some eyeshadow on my crease making it darker slightly old hollywood so the makeup itself should be crisp and round shaped as opposed to the watercolor blend which is too smudgy for them see that's the difference between them and romantics they don't have to be gentle and water blended they keep the rounded shape yes that's the yin part in them but at the same time it has to be crisp so the crease color i do is crisp but i'm making it round not necessarily elongated to my temples or sharpened to the end of my brow. I did some more in the bottom. 
Now I'm applying my favorite red lipstick at the moment, Ruby Woo by MAC. They gave me that sample in the shop when I was buying something there, so I still use it, but soon I'll get full lipstick. It gives that very amazing crisp mouth effect. At the same time, it's very velvety. It doesn't reflect light almost, so it's so matte, but it's not drying looking. It's very fresh looking. So this is kind of my old Hollywood makeup, but as I look at it now, I think I could make my eyeliner even thicker. Don't be scared of that, just try that at home. Right, before I continue my makeup, let's look at some famous soft Camines examples and what kind of tips and tricks these women had. Now first let's look at Bette Davis, amazing example of Alt Hollywood soft Camine. Small and delicate bones, soft flesh, but at the same time pretty angular. First let's look at her in her younger age. Look at her clumpy lashes. That's what she did. Crisp mouth, crisp brows, super clumpy lashes and thick eyeliner. That's what she did. Look at that clumpiness. Isn't it cool? She didn't try to comp that. And look at that dark outline of the eyes. She looked amazing with that. As she got older, she still was emphasizing her lashes and she still was using that very chunky eyeliner. You don't see the flick, droopiness of the eyes and smoky eye, like that 20s, 30s smoky eye, was pretty popular at the time when she was younger. We can see also here that crazy smoky eye, 20s smoky eye. Look at those huge eyes that she had. She had pretty small lips, but these lips are doll-like, small and crisply done. Also, they look great with both eyes and lips and even cheeks. They don't look vulgar with that, they don't look overdone, so this is just the bone structure that they have. Here's when she got older, she still was doing her eyes pretty chunky. And she's even older on those two pictures. Just look at how this lady rocks that eyeliner. Very clean face, she doesn't add anything there. Brows, crisp line, red lips. Another great example from those times, Irtha Kitt, correct me if I pronounce her name wrong. Her brows were thicker than Bette Davis's. They were very defined. She's much more contrasted than Bette. She has much darker coloration. Her hair, her brows, everything has just darker coloration. She always made her eyes look very chunky. She always lined her eyes pretty heavily. Look at those two pictures. I think it's closer to the 60s. We can see that volume on hair. The hair is very typical 60s. And she even didn't touch her lips here because in the 60s, the lips were nude, the eyes is all we have. Thick eyeliner and the brows. When she got older again, those chunky eyes, huge eyelashes, I think it's false eyelashes in there. And then finally when she got even older, she still was rocking that chunky eyeliner. Again, red lips, pink cheeks, she's good to go. Jenna Coleman, more modern example. She's also very rounded and smallish looking, but at the same time angular. She has some sharpness in her facial bones. This is more kind of daytime makeup. Smoky eye, but still daytime smoky eye. We can see crisply done lips, some cheeks. You almost can't see any contouring, but it's just done in rounded motion. And as far as her coloration is also pretty bright, she's pretty contrasted. Her brows are dark, so is her hair. They look amazing with those smudgy smoky eye, kind of like 20s. That men's shirt, super oversized on her, looks amazing in those hair as if she just woke up in the morning. She looks like a doll, like a child, still a grown-up girl. Here on those two pictures you can see how great they can look with smoky eye makeup but also with dark lips at the same time. And you can see even in the right picture she has her eyeshadow blended up to the brow, which looks very retro in this case. That would be kind of a stylization of the 20s. When they use some very strange and bright colors and strange shapes to shape their eyes, they can look like dolls. If they're making it too blended, too watercolor blend, too gentle colors, without chunkier pieces, brighter accents, some crispness, they can look tired sometimes. A little bit everything is too romantic, a little bit everything is too weightless. But I'm not saying on these pictures it's necessarily like this, but it's kind of close. Also, they don't look as good when they try to be more like that glamorous girl with loads of blended eyeshadows in too sharp and angular manner with a lot of shimmer and transparency. It looks cute still, but a little bit separate from them, a little bit not for them. Hayden Pinetier. Now we have blonde example. So she has pretty light coloration. She has light eyes, light hair, light skin. This is her nude makeup. You can see that crisp lash line helps to make it more soft gamin look. I love that red lip look on her on these two pictures. Beautiful shining skin, well-shaped brows, very crisp mouth and very matte and pretty crisp lash line. And if she did her lash line a bit thicker, she would look great as well. That's her with smoky eye and bright lip, which looks pretty cute on her. On this picture, I like everything maybe except for those lashes. Here she looks more like a figure skater or ballroom dancer. It's more theatrical. It's just too unnatural, too long looking for her eye shape. 
too blended and too much shimmer on this one. If she made the blending a little bit more crisp, so we from the distance would see the exact shape of her eye makeup, then that would look amazing. And here her makeup looks a little bit more like Romantic's makeup. Very blended, very gentle, loads of shimmer. It's too weightless for them. Last but not least, Lucy Hale also wanted to show you how great they can look with just brows and lips. She has her lashes here, but not that much. And also her hair and her skin has pretty dark contrast. So those huge and very precise brows and those crisp and matte lips look amazing. This is another red lip look. Heavier on the eyes, heavier on the lips, heavier on the cheeks. Looks gorgeous on them. And also the brows. Here, slightly rock cheek look. They look great with that slightly 20s crazy smoky eye. Here, I would not say that the hair is necessarily right for soft gamines. But if you look on that smoky eye, again, yeah, we can see that on the left picture, it's even closer to Beth Davis. You can see that she didn't try to lift her eyes up. She made it droopy, again, slightly about the 20s. Also, they look amazing with dark lips, crisp, matte or not matte, doesn't matter. Here's one thing that I would not recommend, maybe just for every day, for soft gamines. Something that is very angular and sharp, that is not supported by anything else. That can look slightly separate from them, because they are still very soft. So that softness gets conflicted with that super sharp and long line. That is kind of not supported. As if she started doing her makeup with that flick and she kind of didn't finish that. Also on these two pictures, again, I can't say that it's a makeup don't. I just wanted you to compare almost everything that she has done here for herself, except for her clothes, is pushing down the contrast. For these ladies' bone structure that is quite angular, they push down their contrast too much, that can make them look slightly tired. It's great that she has those dark brows, puts that contrast back on her, but if she didn't have that, she would be totally washed out, because the lip color, the cheeks color, a lot of shimmery eyeshadow on the eyes, and no exact line, so everything is very watercolor blended. So is here. However, here she has much more contrast in her hair, so they look better with that. They don't look as good with dull hair colors or slight highlights. Here she has pretty bright highlights. You can see the difference between the ends of her hair and the roots, so it's a huge difference actually. But again, a lot of shimmer on the face, very blended watery colors. One color goes to another color. Back to my makeup. Alright, now I'm back to my pale lips, because I'm gonna do smoky eye now. And actually that will look amazing with pale lips, but with that chunky eyeliner, that will look slightly 60s on them, so just try that. Now I'm taking that dusty purplish brownish color, it's dark, it's slightly satin, it's slightly shimmery, but not as much. And I'm creating rounded, but crisp at the same time, shape on my eyes. That's very important, we have to see where the blending stops. As you can see, I'm making that rounded shape on my eyes, I'm not necessarily illustrating getting them to my temples. I'm also cleaning with a q-tip at the beginning of my eyeshadow by the nose so it would look slightly more professional because sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes it starts too chunky. Adding slightly on the bottom. Now you can line your waterline. In many cases that will look amazing. On the other hand, I keep my eye makeup today without the waterline. I just want to keep it more doll-like, make my eyes more rounded and huge. And of course for smoky eye you can choose much darker colors. Just have bright accents with touches of sparkle. I hope you like the video. Also, now I have this button sponsor. If you click on that button, you can support me and that's gonna be a huge help for me and for my channel. You'll get early access to some of my videos and in the future I will add more and more exclusives for you guys. If you love some retro music, some classic rock, you're welcome to subscribe on my music channel as well. You can also support me on Patreon, that would be a huge help for me. I upload some exclusive videos there sometimes and I answer your questions there, so please welcome. You can subscribe on my Instagram for just random stuff from my music and from my makeup life. You can also subscribe on my Pinterest where I have 13 boards as an inspiration for each body type. It might help you to get a better idea about the body types in general. Alright, continue this series. I'm gonna see you in several days. Bye-bye.